Hello everybody, it's Khalif PvP bring another Battleborn video. This time we're doing a video on things that Battleborn needs to improve upon. They're not all big and grain breaking or anything like that. These are small improvements that I think will add ton of value to the game. And my hope is that these small additions further sets it apart from the big crowded competitions that's uh, that's coming with paragons paladins war i mean overwatch uh so hopefully this gives more of a reason for those types of players to also check out battleborn so without further ado here's my list of small improvements that will be beneficial to battleborn so the first thing that Battleborn needs to improve is its mutated skills. And what I mean by that is essentially when you level up to 3, 5, 7, 9, 12, you get an extra skill that you can mutate into. Um, and in my opinion, and the skills that I've unlocked so far, most of the mutated skills are very subpar. If they're not subpar, they're smacked in the middle of two options that are much better than the mutated option. So take into account, for example, your level 9 mutation that you get from Orendi, uh, which is Chaotic Reach, which increases the Shadow Pillar's cast distance by 25%. Now, increasing the cast distance is not a terrible skill mutation to have, but it's in the middle of Shadow Fire Storm and still hating your shields. So Shadow Fire Storm in increase or decreases Shadow Pillar's cooldown, which is much better than increasing cast distance, and then still hating your shield does a shield penetration. Again, much better than cast distance. So somebody picking cast distance over um, definitely the cooldown, it just does not make sense. And some of the skills, for example, Orendi's level three mutation, it's it's just not that good. For um, So the level three mutations, Chaos Bolts, your second year burst attacks, homes in on enemies in close range. Orendi should not be fighting close range. Her Playstyle should be a hit and run tactic, and it just doesn't make any sense for her to be in close range. And it's not really limited to Orendi. There's other classes that have the same effect. So let's look at Wrath. Uh, Catalytic Smash no longer uh, knocks people into air, but stuns if been recently hit by crossplate. Again, doesn't make any sense because your knockup is might as well be a stun anyway. And in addition to that, Slowing strikes is much more useful because you're a melee character and you want your target to be slowed down so you can close the distance. Uh, so much of these mutated skills, it just does not make sense. The only one that to date that I found was really useful was Miko's one where it increases your health, uh, health regen uh, on your one of your alt attacks. The next thing is story mode. In this game, story mode public rather you essentially you join a team you search for a game you join a team and then you're given an option of three randomly selected scenarios random like the story missions to go through the downside is if you have already played those story modes too bad you th those are the options that you still have so what that means is you know if you already played the a particular one for like the 50th time for example all uh, the algorithm i played there that one so many times if I get it, I I either have to play it or I gotta, you know, rage quit the game. Considering that the story missions are quite long, anywhere from 25 to 35 minutes minimum, uh, you know, it just does not make sense why you're forced to play scenarios that you really don't want to play. Especially scenarios where, for example, you know, the Sentinel and the Archive, I don't mind too much. But if I get the algorithm once more, I know for a fact that I'm going to rage quit. So it just does not make any sense why we cannot just simply select the, at least select like a range of stories that we want to play and then have the group be formed around that rather than the other way around. Next up is the lack of healers. Um, so if, let's assume that you want to play a assault type character you have caldarius you have Mel melka you have oscar mike F whiskey foxtrot if you want to play a melee kind of brawler type character you can play shane you can play wrath you can play where is he galilea el dragon etc 
if you want to play a sniper you got marquee thorn um and to some degree toby as well as well as isaac if you want to sit in the back lines and kind of use some pop shots but when it comes to healer you only really have umbra and um my favorite, personal favorite miko Miko is pretty much in reality the only healer you have because the healing from Umbra is nearly not enough to warrant to be called to essentially be a main healer. Her healing's really not that strong enough. So right now it's kind of you know if the opposing team has a Miko and your team does not, it's a guaranteed to be a pretty steep uphill battle. To add on to the whole uh, lack of healer things, there's another thing that gets culminated by that is the inability to change your character in PvP after you've made the selection. Um, in PvP, it's kind of first, whoever picks it first gets gets the rights to that character, right? Uh, one of my main characters is Wrath. I love playing him, especially in the Conquest maps. But, um, you know you'll see in this in this one right here you know one of the people pick wrath and now i can't pick him right even though i was one of the first ones to pick i could have been one of those people that immediately picked wrath but you know if any of my teammates don't or rather aren't a good healer aren't a good good miko then our team's going to be in such a severe disadvantage. Whereas in games like Dota and and Smite and even Overwatch, which this game's going to get uh, a lot of comparisons to, I can see exactly what my teammates are going to pick before they pick it, right? So if I see a lot of people choosing tank classes, I know to pick a healer class and so on and so forth. And in this game. If you don't have a healer on your team, it's like a guaranteed ageless. loss. If you have like what I consider a perfect uh, team composition, you have a healer, you have a damage dealer like Galilea, um, and a uh, support character like um, Reyna, that team, unless they're really, really awful, that team's going to be super strong and they're, they're just guaranteed to win. And you can see it right here you know, on the enemy team. They have no healer on their end. And they're not going to win this fight. I mean, here I'll, I'll, I'll show some videos of, or clips rather, of the same exact fight where my teammates are taking a ton of damage. But because I'm playing Miko and I'm a decent Miko player, I'm able to keep them up really well. I got three of them chasing me. Yep, following me right behind. Take sight while they're chasing. Collector A secure. I got you. Just get this guy off me, please. Power play. Enemy forces at half strength. So that pretty much wraps up my, you know, list of things to improve upon in Battleborn. Um, if you guys think I hit the nail on the head, please let me know in the comments. If you disagree with me, also leave it in the comments. Let me know what you disagree with. Um, maybe I missed something. Maybe some of the things I said were incorrect. Uh, so let me know in the comment section. If you like the video, please like and subscribe. And until next time, this is Khalif EVP.